Drinking coffee and other caffeinated beverages with a meal associated with a 39 to 90% reduction in iron absorption. 39 to 90% reduction. Does that mean that your coffee or your pre-workout could be making you anemic, ironically stealing your energy and making you fatigued rather than giving you energy? Not quite. Coffee gets in the way of iron absorption. So it's not coffee specifically, and it's, it's not even caffeine. It's the polyphenols and tannins in coffee and teas that can hinder iron absorption. Because once I stopped, I immediately had way, way more energy. Or maybe not immediately, but like 10 days, two weeks afterwards. Okay, hold on. Iron stores refill relatively slowly. It's unlikely, even with iron supplementation, that there would be a dramatic improvement in just two weeks, especially because the polyphenols and tannins mostly inhibit non-heme iron, like plant sources of iron and iron supplements. That's where the 39 to 90% number comes from. The absorption of heme iron from animal products is only reduced by 10 to 20%. And Joe Rogan's guest, he eats red meat. You have low iron. Do you eat red meat? Uh, yeah, I eat a lot. Of, uh, it's like a genetic thing. Now, quitting caffeine may have helped his iron supplements absorb better, but I think the real reason why he felt better in just a couple weeks was simply because his adenosine receptors and his neurotransmitter dynamics normalized after being overstimulated from the daily coffee consumption, giving him more quote-unquote natural energy. Now, if you're a vegan coffee drinker, it's likely you could become anemic over time. If you're a meat-eating coffee drinker, you probably have nothing to worry about. And the polyphenols in coffee, they can be healthy, but in terms of maximizing iron absorption, pre-workout is the better caffeine alternative. So for all your supplement needs, that information you are looking for is in the Natty Plus cheat sheet in the description below. Peace.